<laughs> to Hey guys and welcome back to my channel so today we'll be doing a quick weave 101 i'm going to share with you everything that i use to get a flawless quick weave every time no matter what kind of quick weave i'm doing if that is something you think you're interested in then just stay tuned for the video so to start out with, I like to pick what kind of wig cap I'm going to be using. The wig cap that I use depends on the type of quick weave that I'm doing for that day. So for a removable quick weave, I like to go in with a shower cap and then one of the dome caps, the spandex make your own wig dome caps. I like to put the shower cap on first and then put the dome cap over it. That way when I'm gluing on the tracks, it doesn't get stuck to my head. I like to use this combination if I plan on removing my quick weave and kind of creating a wig and saving it for later. In this case, um, if I glue all the tracks on that dome cap, I will sew the tracks on later on just to have a permanent wig so that I don't have to redo the whole process and do a whole quick weave every time I wanna use those bundles. I just make the wig then and there so that it's already done and then I just sew them in place so that all I have to do is just wash and reuse and restyle the wig. Now, when I want a more permanent quick weave, I like to go in with two dome caps or two wig caps. Um, I get these. I get these from my local beauty supply store. Um, they're only like $2 for the six pack and I like to use both a brown cap for the first layer and then a black cap for the second layer. Um, and I like to use the brown cap because when I cut out, um, cut out the black cap on top, I like to have the brown cap underneath. So when I put like my closure or my frontal um, on top, um, the brown cap makes it look more scalp-like. So that's why I like to go in with two. So the number one thing is gonna be wig caps. So the second thing I wanna mention um, for my quick weave essentials is the protective shield or the bond protective shield to protect um, your hair from the glue that you're putting on the tracks. I don't like to get glue in my hair. It's very difficult uh, to get out of like kinky curly hair or just hair in general. It's very hard for you to get the glue out once it's in there, even if you use like oils and conditioners to remove the glue, like it's just very time consuming. So to avoid all of that, I like to use the Bond Protective Shield. This is the Roberts Diamond Bond Protective Shield. And I get the black one. Um, it dries like well it comes out like a black bluish color but it dries black for the most part they also have a clear um version of this if you like to use the clear i've used the clear before um i just prefer the black one and i like to use this to coat everywhere that i'm not going to cut out the black cap and reveal the brown cap underneath so let's say i'm doing like a middle part closure like this and i put on my brown cap and my black cap over that I'm gonna put the Roberts Diamond Bond everywhere except for where I'm gonna put the closure. So the closure's right here. I'm gonna put the Roberts uh, Protective Shield everywhere else and I'm gonna let it dry. You have to let it completely dry before you start gluing on your tracks. Once it's completely dry, your wig caps are gonna pretty much stay in place um, because it has such a strong hold. So then once it's completely dry, I'll go in and kind of, kind of like squeeze my way in between the two caps, between the brown one and the black one, and just cut out like um, a U-shaped space to where the brown cap is still there, but the black cap is no longer there. So when I glue my closure down, it'll look more like scalp. To apply this, you can either like just squeeze it out on your head and then just brush it around. I like to use, I like to use this type of brush to just spread the Roberts Diamond Bond around and make sure that it's evenly coated everywhere. You don't have to use a lot, like you're not gonna use too much of this to cover um, to cover all of your head. And what I really like about it is that it rinses out water. Like your quick weave will literally slip right out if you use this um, running your hair under like warm water for maybe like 10 to 15 minutes and all of the tracks and everything are gonna slide right out of your hair. It makes it so much easier to remove your quick weave. That's literally all I do to remove my quick weaves is just rinse, rinse out my quick weaves with water unless it's a removable quick weave. In that case, I just take it off because I don't 
it's not stuck to my head but if you were doing a cookie that was stuck to your head then i would definitely recommend this if you want to protect your hair um, and if you want like an easy quick removal for your quick weave. The third thing that I recommend that you have for your quick weave essentials is the glue. I always use the Salon Pro 30 Second Super Hair Bond Glue, which is just your typical hair glue whenever you do quick weaves. It's like a dark gray glue and it, it like, as it dries, it gets just like slightly darker if you've never used it before. Um, for those of you that have, used it before. This is the only glue that I use to do my quick weaves. I don't have any problems with my tracks sliding out or um, slipping. It literally does dry in 30 seconds, so your track is pretty much there. I like to use this in combination with um, a holding spray. With that glue comes number four, which is your holding spray. I like to use a spritz or like got to be. So I know most of us have used the Pump It Up Gold Styling Spritz. The Pump It Up Gold Styling Spritz um, by BB, this is like, everybody has had this in their house. Like, everybody. Like, if you've never used this Pump It Up Spritz, like, this in combination with the glue gives you a stronger hold for your tracks. As you put the glue on your track and you spray it with spritz and then you kind of blow dry, I would say for like 10 to 15 seconds, blow dry it until it's like tacky. The glue will get like a little bit darker and you put it, put the track on your cap, it'll hold a lot better with the tackiness of the spritz and the tackiness of the glue. It just, they just work well together. So that is um, the next one in my quick weave essentials. You can also use got to be. I know most of us have got to be in some way, shape or form in our house. Um, I have this one. I also have this one. I believe there's like the black can of got to be i've lately been using the ebon wonder lace bond as well just any kind of hair holding spray really helps for your tracks to stay better if you don't want to spray each track individually like as you go and you glue through the tracks um you can always spray the spritz or the hairspray directly onto the wig cap and then once you put the glue on your track and you blow dry it for 10 to 15 seconds you can lay it on the wig cap where the spritz already is and it'll still give you the same effect and it'll still hold a lot better i definitely recommend you have that in your quick weave kit next is a pair of scissors that is number five are we on number five that is number five um you definitely need a good pair of scissors i've never done a quick weave where i just kind of flipped the tracks over and just kept like gluing the tracks um i feel like that only works when you're doing like um when you're like making a wig by hand and you're sewing the wig or if you're like doing a sewing but as far as like gluing the tracks during a quick weave i've never done that before so you always want a good pair of scissors to cut the tracks um as you go because you measure the tracks up against your head as you do your quick weave so you want to have a good pair of scissors you don't want to have no janky scissors messing up your tracks and your bundles especially if you want to reuse them you want to have a good pair of scissors so that's definitely important to have in your quick weave kit so number six is going to be your hair tools that includes your um, vented brush your comb your edge brush your tweezers so that you can pluck your lace and a razor so that you can cut your lace um, if you don't use scissors for that if you just prefer to use a razor this is the type of brush that i like to use um the one where it doesn't have like that i try to put an example on the screen so you can know what kind of brush i don't like to use sometimes when those brushes um they're also vented brushes when they get old the inside comes out so like you'll be in the middle of like brushing your hair and then the, ins the whole inside will just be stuck in your hair i don't like those i prefer these because they don't have like um an inside or like a back to them and i feel like these brushes are also better when you're blow drying your hair because the hair just goes right through them and there's nothing there's nothing like stopping the hair or the the hair flow when it's getting blow dried so i definitely prefer th these types of brushes definitely need a good comb i like to use the kind um that have like the pointed top with like the separation at the top just it's good it's better for parting and then one with like the rat tail comb so that you can really get like a nice neat part wherever you're trying to do it even if it's straight or if it's curved like a good comb really makes a big difference you don't want combs with 
super wide teeth they won't give you as clean of a part um so you want to get something that's like small and convenient and that is really precise when it comes to parting your hair because you don't want to like finish your whole quick weave and then you can't part your hair and your parts all crooked and it's all over the place because you don't have the right kind of comb and you also want a good edge brush and i like to pick up um new edge brushes pretty often. I will say that dirty edge brushes do work best. Um, brand new edge brushes, they just don't, they don't swoop like they're supposed to swoop. Like, let me know down in the comments if you understand what I mean by that. Like, something about having a dirty edge brush just makes all the difference, but you don't want it to be like too dirty to where it's just like, you can't really, like it's, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. So I like to pick up new edge brushes. So you definitely want to have like, a good edge brush whether it be like slightly dirty or brand new because once you finish and you're styling your hair you want all your baby hairs to be baby hairing or adult hairing what you know whatever you like so you want to have um a good edge brush i like to get the ones that are dual sided so the ones that have like the brush on one end and the comb on the other and i actually don't like the um curved combs as much as i like the straight ones like the small straight combs this one these combs I feel like work better for me um, when I'm trying to do my baby hairs than um, this one. So if you can see that. I just prefer this one. I don't mind this one. Like I'll use it if I absolutely have to. Um, I want to say I just bought this one because it was white, but I needed a new edge brush anyways. So that's why I got this. But if you can find one of these, that would be better. I'm gonna the next hair tool I recommend is a razor to cut off your lace. I don't like to cut my lace off with scissors. I feel like no matter, like even when I'm using the scissors and I'm doing that up and down motion to make sure that the edge is not straight across and it looks unnatural, I feel like the razor, I use the eyebrow razor, they give me a better um, outcome when I'm trying to get that look. So I always get these. They're usually up front, like at the beauty supply by the register, like in the little cup. So I just like to grab these when I go in there and buy stuff I don't need. So um, you definitely wanna have one of these. And if not, like I said, a good pair of scissors. So the last thing I feel like is important is a good pair of tweezers for hair tools. Um, because sometimes like you may get a wig that's too dense in the front and so you want it to look like a little bit more natural or more of a natural hairline. You wanna have a good pair of tweezers to, you know, like, pluck out any hairs that you feel like are unnecessary or to thin out your baby hairs a little bit so that they're not as thick. Depending on whatever look that you're going for, you always wanna have a good pair of tweezers. I like to use the slanted tweezers. They're only like $2 at the beauty supply. Um, whatever tweezers work best for you. Better quality tweezer, the better your experience with plucking. So I definitely think it's important that you pick the best pair of tweezers for you and I don't recommend going like the cheaper route these I mean these are cheap but it just it really makes a difference when you have like a better pair of tweezers because the like dollar tweezers they just don't they don't grab the hairs as much and then you take more time plucking and you, we want to do this quick it's a quick we, we don't want to be taking all day plucking and customizing hairlines the, the whole point is for you to get it done quickly so invest in a good pair of tweezers Number seven is gonna be elastic bands. So um, I have different types of elastic bands. I have like one that you just wrap around your head and tie, it's like pretty long. And then I have the one that's like connected in a loop. I wanna say that um, I got this from the beauty supply store and I got this one I wanna say from like a hair company like a long time ago. But you can get any type of elastic band that you're looking for at the beauty supply store. I like to glue my closure down um, before I do my tracks so that my lace is already melting as I do my quick weave. So while I'm, once I glue my closure down, I tie my elastic band on and then I glue my tracks and then I take my elastic band off. So you definitely wanna have an elastic band in your quick weave kit. I think it's very important to have and it's essential to really melting that lace in your skin. Um, and then it's like, you don't really have to wait when you finish like gluing all the tracks in, your, your lace is already melted so you can just start styling your hair. You don't have to wait as long. Um, so I, I definitely like to use it for that. And you can get these, everything that I mentioned in this video, you can get from your local beauty supply store. So I probably won't have links in the description box, 
but your local beauty supply store will carry these items and they're all pretty affordable. You definitely need an elastic band in your kit. It is, it is essential. I mean, like you can definitely try to like lay your lace with one of those satin scarves, but it just won't melt the same. Like it, ju it just won't melt the same. Just, just get an elastic band. They're like $3. Get an elastic band. You need it in your kit to melt that lace. So number eight and nine are going to be the wax stick and hot comb. This combination will get your quick weave so flat, like super flat. Um, we don't like lumpy closures or lumpy frontals, depending on what style you're doing. You're going to nine times out of 10 need your wax stick and your hot comb. Um, and a wax stick for me lasts a very long time. It only takes a little bit of this and then the heat from the hot comb to just press everything out and get it flat. I never have any issues with like greasiness or extra residue and um, it, it helps me get my wigs like super flat. I don't, I can't imagine like trying to do my quick weave without it. No one wants like a lumpy wig. Numbers eight and nine go hand in hand. You need both of them. You can't just have one and the other. Well, I take that back. Nah, 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 nah. You gotta have both. Like when I do um my synthetic wigs, like I use the wax stick in my curling wand and that works only because my hot comb is too hot for my synthetic wigs. But if I were to try that on human hair, I don't I don't feel like it would give me the same effect. And the hot comb by itself without the wax stick holding the hair down and holding the flyaways it just won't work the same. Like you have to have them hand in hand. You just need them in your kit, they're essential. Number 10 is gonna be gel or edge control. I prefer gel. Uh, I like to use gel on both my synthetic and human hair wigs, whether I'm doing a synthetic or human hair quick weave. Um, I prefer gel every time. And if I don't like to use gel, then I'll use like a holding spray. But I never have, um, I never have, like flakiness or cakiness or buildup when I use gel. But every time I use edge control, it just leaves me like greasy white buildup. And I've tried multiple different kinds of edge controls on um, all of my weave hairstyles, but I just, I always come back to gel. My favorite gel I like to use is the Wetline Extreme Gel. You'll see this in like most of my videos. This is what I use, this is what I recommend. Um, if you don't like gel, you can also use mousse. So I will, I would say, um, this is the mousse that I like to use. I just recently started using that mousse, but I always default back to my gel. You can use Wetline Extreme um, on your baby hairs, or you can use Eco Styler Gel, but I don't use Eco Styler Gel. I actually don't have Eco Styler Gel. I used to use it, but I don't use it anymore. I use Wetline. I just really like Wetline. It gives me a lot of um, movement when I'm doing my baby hairs. Like it's, it's a lot easier for me to move my baby hairs around and sculpt them and with edge control because it's like so thick and so stiff. It doesn't give you as much freedom. And then like if you were to apply more edge control, it just you could just get more and more buildup. I don't have that problem when I use my wet line extreme gel to do my baby hairs. Number 10 is definitely dedicated to your baby hairs. And even if you want to have like a no baby hair look, um, you can also use this to like kind of push your baby hairs back. I wouldn't go overboard with the gel. I definitely don't use a whole lot. You don't really need a whole lot. Um, but it, it just it just makes a difference. Like when I'm just trying to do that, those finishing final touches, I always use gel to get that done because it just really makes a difference for me. So those are all of my quick weave essentials, all 10 of my quick weave essentials. I feel like all 10 of these items are exactly what you need in your quick weave kit to get a flawless quick weave every time. I am going to list the products in the description box, but I probably won't be able to find the links for all of the products because you get them at your um, local beauty supply store. If I can find a link, I will put if I can find a link, I will put it in the description box um, for you guys so that you can buy them online. But like I said, I get all of my products from my local beauty supply store. Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of the products that I mentioned in today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.